Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and this morning we have with us Robert Hensley, who's going to be talking about Jimby drumming. Correct? Okay. Jimby drumming, yes. So I'm excited about this because I love those drums. I love the sound of them. I don't know anything about them or own one, but I want to get one. Mm, maybe after this you'll be determined. Yes, I'll be more determined. <laughs> and just just because it's on my mind, since I don't have a drum, are there any tips you could give me on choosing one? Hmm. Well, first, I would want to make sure you were uh, dedicated to it because there is an investment. Um, probably the least expensive that I've seen produce any kind of good sound would be about 250 something like that um, my drums uh, about 850 you can buy, you can buy them up to 1200 depending on the elaborateness of the carving but that doesn't influence sound so any any price from about 800 up to 1250 is just because of the beauty of the drum ah okay I looked at one on Amazon. It was all black. It wasn't very beautiful, but it was $250. It had the bolts to tighten it, to tune it and stuff. Yeah, that was probably made by Remo, and they're really good drums for the purpose of drum circles uh, out in nature because those are synthetic skins and they're not as delicate. So. I've actually played one of those during a downpour. We had a bunch of people in a, in a drum circle and we were just giggling at the fact that the raindrops were, were bouncing off of our drum as we played. <laughs> well, that sounds okay. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I thought, well, it's all black. I could paint things on it and make it look cool. That too, that too. Yeah, the, the, the Remos are good. Um, in, you'll find though, as you grow in your drumming and especially from a shamanic perspective, you'll appreciate um, the unique quality and the feel uh, when you uh, go to an all natural uh, drum. So it would have some kind of animal skin stretched over um, steel uh, bands and then stretched over uh, a solid wood um, a shell they call it and and pulled with uh, with, uh, with mountain mountain hiking uh, mountain climbing cord uh -huh. okay it, but the, the the sound and the feeling is just so totally different between those two types of drums it is okay those have to be kept they have to be warm though don't they well they have to be yeah they, it's better to keep them around room temperature the more consistent you the temperature um the more beneficial for the drum um if it's too drastic the drum uh skin because it's pulled with such enormous power it's really pulled tight uh, with all these uh, cords, then there's a lot of pressure. And so the slightest variation in the, um, in the skin can cause it to pop or to rip and you just have to replace it. And that replacement of the skin alone is at least 150 to $250 depending on the maker. Well, okay. Well, I don't have to worry about that for a while because I'm not so good. I need a better drum. <laughs> and uh, that's a bad attitude. But uh, Well, I'm starting to give lessons online now. I'm finding that I can help people um, online with both recorded uh, lessons I'm putting up and one-on-one -on -one like we're doing on Zoom to... Uh, so that I can actually see and hear a person play, watch their technique, and give them a critique and help them build because the, the other aspect that is really important, uh, one of them is to get good distinction of sound between the tone, bass, and slap. And you, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go.
Okay. All right. Well, I will. I don't have any more questions now <laughs> yet. But. Hmm. Well, were I have a lot. That I teach. Yeah. Um. Oops, excuse me. So, the you know the unusual part about about the way I teach drumming or the foundations, uh, spiritual foundations of drumming is uh, a little different perspective. So most people would think that uh, mm -hmm. drumming is about hitting the drum. And that is a basic component, but it's not the most important part. The actual, um, key to motivating dancers and to motivating um, the relationship, your connection with uh, people in the audience, hopefully you've got them all moving and they're dancing. Mm -hmm. that, that main fundamental principle is not about hitting the drum at all. It's actually about the silence between the beats. Um. So, so the so the the real so from the vedas uh which is my spiritual uh background um from ancient india the idea is that that when we hit a drum we create a like a peak of excitation uh -huh. and what follows that hit is a deep dive into silence and then we have another hit so what we're doing is we're framing the silence. Okay. Each time we, each time we have that, we create that excitation or that vibration of a, of a drum hit. We're, um, it's like we're hitting uh, consciousness and exciting consciousness. And so we have excited consciousness. And then what happens after we hit the drum is, your nature, our divine nature, is silence. And so we go back to that. And so if we're, if we're following the dynamic pulse of a, of a hit, then we dive inward after it, and then we come back out with the next hit. Okay. So, so the, and the dive towards who we are, the dive towards consciousness, the dive towards silence is the most blissful experience as described in the Vedas. So if we are diving towards in the direction of our inner being, then we are actually creating uh, like a, uh, a dive board I mean, at, this, at the swimming pool. Uh -huh. So hit is like a diving board. And then we, we go, so it's actually, it's not the hits that create the bliss. It's, it's how they frame the silence between. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but to get, to get, to get that, uh, to get that right, I'm going to, I'm going to play something for you. If, if okay. okay. All right. So to understand that, here's the way it goes, right? So there's this, there's this rhythm called Yankadi from West Africa. And that rhythm um, has certain hits to it. So it goes like this. So that's the basic beat. I can't hear you now. No, you, you lost it? Yeah, I can barely hear you. Wow. Can you could you couldn't hear the drum? I heard the drum, but I couldn't hear you when you start talking again. Oh, that might be because of the the speaker will adjust. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what what I'll do is I'll explain what I'm going to do and then I'll drum and then I'll come back in. Okay. And then maybe the speaker will adjust. So Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the, the, the sound, the, the beats, but I'm going to play them straight. Okay. I'm not going to vary the spacing. Okay. Right? 
and you and just see just you can close your eyes and see which of these two ways of playing makes you want to move okay all right okay so there's, there's psychology there there's a there's a trick to getting people to, to move. move yeah yeah okay. right so I'll play it straight and then I'll play it with what's called feeling or micro timing okay Yes, I can definitely tell the huge difference. <laughs> huge difference. So there's two things that happened there. I went, I, I demonstrated, can you hear me yet? Yeah. Okay. So I demonstrated micro timing, which means that I, I delayed some of the hits. I manipulated the silence. I made the silence longer. And I find that that creates a sense of anticipation. And that anticipation is what draws you into want to move. And then the other thing was I enhanced the spikes that we're creating with the hits by creating tonation or melody. So I went from just hitting what, I, what we call tones. Um, so the tones were right, and then then I switched to tone slap bass. So I went boom, bat, tap, boom, boom, bat, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom. So there's so I had more highs and lows, and I spread the time. Okay. So both things. Are, that's two of the twenty-one factors that I teach on how to motivate dancers. Um, and they're all just traditional ways of, of playing drums to, um, to bring uh, the qualities of consciousness into play, into, into the space. Okay. Pretty cool, Interesting. huh? Interesting, yes, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that's, so that's uh, so those are two of the important aspects uh, would be um, silence, uh, which is um, timing and micro timing or, or how much you swing or how much you separate or push together. Hits. Okay. Um, and then the, uh, the, the essence of melody or getting clarity in the hits on the lap bass and there's about 11 or 12 others that I teach different kinds of sounds you can get them on two fingers. You're fading out. Um, may have to talk a little louder. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's fading out pretty bad. <laughs> uh -oh. It might be my connection. I, I live in a tiny house in the country in, in uh, outside of San Diego. Oh, and the connection's not real great? It might not be. Sometimes it varies a little bit. Okay. I have five bars here, but that, uh, that doesn't always tell me. Right, right. Okay, so I'm getting some ideas, but I, I think I'm going to have to actually play to figure out what you're saying mm -hmm. or how to do it. You well, teach how to do it. You want, you want me to teach you how to do this to time spacing? I can do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Huh. All right. So what you do, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to swing a rhythm. And that means how to play the, how to play around with the spacing. So I'm going to play something straight, meaning straight timing, like a, like a Western drummer would do. They always play to the micro, uh, to the, uh, Metrodome, metronome. metronome. Right? They always play yeah. the metronome. And, you know, they might play to all the way to the 30 seconds or even the 64th 
uh, part, uh, meaning, you know, if you play a one eight, you're just going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna, just because it influences the sound because my drum is so loud, uh, I'm gonna play, just so you know, I'm gonna play straight. I won't try and talk to you, and then I'll, then I'll play it swinging. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pair up the, uh, I'm gonna take the pairs, I'm gonna stretch them. Okay. All right. It's easier than it sounds. Okay. <laughs> so here's straight, and I'll and I'll switch it. stretch or the swinging version what you do is you you hit the first hit always exactly at the same time that you would have otherwise so you keep that first one what they call on the pulse but the second one you wait just that little bit okay so so watch so this is straight This is uh, swung or delayed, right? I see. Okay. So you take those two and you just stretch them. Just put a little delay there. Like that. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I like that a lot better. Fun. Let's have fun. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, um, what else were I forgot what else was on your thing that you said you're going to talk about? Oh, does it matter where you hit it? Is it in the middle of the drum? It has to be in the middle of the drum. Mm, for that, we need video, but um, there's um, I I'm actually creating an entire course uh, as the sound mechanic because so many people have trouble getting really good separation of sound between mm -hmm. what we call the tone. That's mm -hmm. on the, well, we say it's on the edge, but as soon as I say edge, people get too far out. So um, yeah, I would, we would need video to show, but basically there's, uh, you put, uh, only you put your hands there, but you've got to be really careful. One of the most important parts is safety. Because you're hitting the drum, mm -hmm. uh, you can hit the soft Gary, which is the skin, but if you hit the, the place where the skin goes over the wood, you're hitting wood and you're going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Joints. Yeah. So one of the very first lesson that I teach is actually about how to be safe and not hurt yourself. Um, how to protect your, your, your pinky joint and um, your thumb. Those are the two places where most people hurt themselves. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. The, the base is, is, in, is all in the skin, so it's, all, it's not quite in the middle. Um, you can do it in the middle, but that's a lot of effort. So but it's all in the skin part. Um, and then... Um, uh, closer to the edge, you're hitting. You're only hitting the skin, but um, you're closer to the edge. So you can get these, you get these three sounds like I was doing for that rhythm yakety. Here we go. So I'm, I'm going to do bass, uh, bass, bass, tone, tone, flat, flat. So okay. The bass is the lowest one. Uh, it's a boom, boom, and then the tone is on the edge, and the slap, slap is also on the edge. Bass, 
space stones on the flat flap. I'm sure I'd get totally tangled up. <laughs> you, you, you will. We're going through things so fast right now that it, it would, it would be, it would be too much. But I don't teach that way. Um, you know, in a, in a regular class, I go by the person's um, speed of learning and which skills need enhancing first. So we always start with safety, and then I start with one of the sounds, and it's usually. Uh, easiest is to start with the bass and just to get a basic pulse going. Now if you're doing it for someone who's journeying, does it then need to just be repetitious for that purpose? Now usually that's, you're, you're usually doing that at about 70 beats per minute or 120 beats a minute. Uh-huh. Beats that, uh, that are used uh, by the European shamans at least that I understand. Uh, from my uh, former wife's parents, they're, uh, they're some of the leaders in the European organization. And um, so they, when they were doing our wedding, for instance, they started it at 70 beats and went to 120. Okay. Um, it's, just on a, it's just on a frame drum. And, um, and so then you just get used to what those sound like on your metronome. So okay. Practice that, and yes, it, it becomes very, very repetitious and hypnotic. That. Right, that's uh, what I thought. That was the point of that. So they're not trying to get people moving on that one. No, you're trying to get people to um, to lose. Um, move to. It, the idea there, as I understand it, and it, this principle applies in the Vedas, so the Haitian traditions, the Afro-Cuban, um, uh, Indian, uh, you know, uh, raga music, uh, all kinds. Um, and that is to create an initial condition whereby uh, the mind uh, can uh, fall within like we started about with silence. So if we're taking a, a drum beat and we're doing repetition and there's no emphasis like every eight. Right. For instance, if I start this at, at about 70 beats uh, or so, let's see if I can. I make an emphasis every eight that gives us a framework and we come back to to our mind we come back to now and what we're trying to do is to be unaware of your again, surroundings unaware of surroundings so if we're not if we're given something that is strong in sensation and does not give reference point, then the mind will take that opportunity and go within. So if I'm doing like 120, I'm not going. In other words, what I did there was I gave I gave emphasis. So Can't hear you. Can't. We'll wait. I think we need one of those lapel mics. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Future. So um, when we give uh, uh, when we give a reference, so if we go do 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 that that, then that brings you back to a cycle, but we don't want a cycle. We want an endless stream. So yes. That, that's the principle of the, of the shamanic journeying, uh, you know, with the frame drum. Okay. And it's interesting, they achieve the same thing in different cultures. So, for instance, in the West African music that I teach, uh -huh. what they do there for theirs is they, um, 
they create uh, hypnotic rhythms that are too complicated for the mind to follow. Uh huh. So it relaxes in it. You still feel it. You feel the rhythm, but it's you can't quite figure it out. And so what they're doing is they're doing uh, straight four four time, which is a, a, a binary kind of timing. Um, and then they and they'll do a six eight timing within it. So they're they're coexisting. And so you're getting a two and a three, and they don't mix. Right. And so, so odds and evens, yeah. So, so your one hand is doing, that must be kind of hard. It's actually not, because what they do is they split it up. So one, so one player is playing a six, eight piece, and another player is playing a four, four piece, and so you have the two at the same time. Oh, okay. Cool. I mean, you can do it, you can do a, a two and three at the same time for instance uh there's a there's a christmas song right yeah that happens to be two and three played together okay so here here we go here's two and three together right you can't I need to wait again so you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it goes way down. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So what that is, you unfortunately, without video, you can't see, but my right hand was doing three. My left hand was doing two. And what you heard is the result of doing those two side by side. Okay. So, so if you, you can do that. So if you teach this by uh, video, you're able to, you've got cameras where you can show the drum? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I, I show my drum and I, I, I look at how they're hitting, if they're, if they're screened, uh, if their uh, camera can just show their hands and the drum, that's the only thing that's important. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. So I can, uh, they're starting to call me the sound mechanic. <laughs> take any, uh, I can take any player, regardless of how advanced they are, and get them to improve their sound. Cool. Well, our time is almost up. Can you tell people how to get a hold of you? Other than, are you on the Shamanic Arts? You're on shamanicarts.studio, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm there now. And... Um, you can also reach me at the at the website, which I'm redesigning um, to to be full of lessons. But all kinds of stuff is free there right now. It's called drumyourway.com. Drumyourway.com. Yeah. Great. That's an easy one. <laughs> easy to remember. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Robert. It was my pleasure to share. Thanks for inviting.